Hey guys, thanks for checking out this episode of Mailbag. Robert Meyer Burnett will be your host for this episode, but I wanted to let you guys know that the sponsor of today's episode is Mint Mobile. Make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash campia and try them out. Also, want to let you guys know that if you'd like to get a comment or question on the mailbag show that Rob and I do, simply go down into the description of this video and you'll see a tip link there. Or enter it in manually at www.streamelements.com slash movieblogtv slash tip. You'll be getting your comment or question read on mailbag if we deem your comment or question appropriate to be used on our show. And of course, you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. And all of us involved with the John Cambia Show, thank you guys so much for your support. With that down, let's throw it over to Rob. Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and wonder, your viceroy of verisimilitude, or as John Campia likes to call me, your existential Mr. Rogers, Robert Meyer Burnett, and this is the John Campia Show mailbag for April 19th, 2022. As you know, when you watch the John Campia Show live, you have about a three-minute window to send in super chats that we will answer on the show. However, for the other 23 hours and... 56 minutes of the day you can send us tips right at the link below anytime anywhere from around this great planet of ours and we will if we deem them appropriate answer them on the mailbag i mean frankly i would love it if i could answer inappropriate questions but that's not really our show anyway we're gonna jump right into it and see what we have today we start with shy potsy now is that is Shy Potsy, is that a Happy Days reference? Uh, you know, like Potsy, the character? Probably not, but it could be. Shy Potsy says, hey, John, and or Rob, it's and or Rob right here. Hope all is well. I know it's extremely hard to answer given we haven't seen them, but after next year, when we have seen both the Ant-Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogies finish, which trilogy do you think you will consider to be your favorite? Ooh, Shy Potsy, that's a good question. I'm a huge fan of the Ant-Man films. I loved Ant-Man. I loved Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I also love Guardians of the Galaxy. And look, I would say just because my own leanings are more toward, I love epic sci-fi space fantasy. I probably will lean into Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm a huge fan of the second Guardians of the Galaxy film too. I really liked how it dealt with dysfunctional families. It depends how it ends, but I think, you know, I, I don't necessarily like to pick and choose because well, I'll own both of them on physical media so I can watch them whenever I want. But I think since you're asking me to give you an answer, I'll probably lean into Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that would be my favorite. Shy Potsy comes back with another tip. Hey, again. Every day, my excitement for Doctor Strange 2 grows. With that being said, and the fact that the multiverse of madness is such a large movie and the gap we had between films... Do you expect us to get a third movie? And if so, when? Ooh, that's a very good question. Um, I would expect, I mean, I've always loved Doctor Strange. And the late, great John Schnepp also was a big Doctor Strange fan. I think we will get a third Doctor Strange film. I mean, I see the Doctor Strange movies kind of on the same trajectory as the Captain America movies went. I mean... Of, of Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America, Captain America, the first Avenger, I believe was the least grossing of the first three of the OG Avengers movies. I think I think uh, this Doctor Strange looks to be the equivalent in terms of audience uh, satisfaction, like Captain America Winter Soldier. And I would imagine a Doctor Strange 3 could be like Civil War, assuming the movie's good, which I'm just going to assume it would be. A good question, and you ask, when do I expect to get it? Obviously, if the movie makes a lot of money, it's been a while since the Doctor Strange film, but I would say probably within three years. I don't know what the plans are for Doctor Strange, but I would assume, again, within three years is probably a good bet. Tom G says, funny and kind of disappointing thought. Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller's tenure as The Flash will end around the same time. Oh, 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 that's kind of a bummer. Um, but an astute observation, look, I love, so does John, we love Ezra Miller's portrayal of The Flash, I just wish that he was a little bit more stable in his personal life, I hope we all get the help that he, I think we all hope he gets the help that he needs, and um, 
I still, I'm really looking forward to the Flash movie. Uh, as Chris Carr says, she doesn't believe it's real. I think it is. It's been shot. I just hope that um, we get it and uh, it's good. But to think that Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller end their tenure as the Flash at the same time. Chloe Fanning says, I wonder how much darker the film Eyes Wide Shut would have been if Warner Brothers had let Stanley Kubrick film the entire vision that he had intended the film to be. Even though I liked the movie, I would have liked to have seen a more darker version of it. Well, Chloe, Stanley Kubrick's my most favorite director of all time. I think Kubrick actually did film the version of Eyes Wide Shut that he intended to film. Now, what happened was, for those of you who don't know, when the movie was finished, there is an orgy sequence that was fairly graphic, and Warner Brothers originally made him, they actually put CG figures over the actual sexual intercourse, the sexual acts that you saw in the film when it was first out so they could secure themselves an R-rated release. That was later changed. They removed the figures so you saw it um, in its uncut form, and I believe that's the form that's out now. But I don't know if it was necessarily a darker film. Remember, it's based on a on a book that's basically called Dream Novel. Or, or I think it's Arthur Schnitzler wrote the book, and it's a pretty faithful adaptation of the book. So I think we got the movie that he wanted, and now Warner Brothers has restored the film, the explicitness, or as John might say, the filthy, brought back the filthy the way it was. But I don't know if Kubrick... Kubrick was... He didn't make movies unless they were exactly the way he wanted them. So I think we pretty much got the movie that he wanted. I think editorially he would have done a little bit more with it, but I don't think he necessarily would have made it darker. I'm glad you liked the movie, though. Um, I think it's it, it has only gotten better over the years. Datman Batman sends in a tip and says, Ezra Miller and Barry Cogan both work for DC, both got arrested while drinking internationally, both kind of look alike, and both are named Barry. <laughs> It's true. Maybe there's a conspiracy afoot. I don't know. I mean, like John said on the show, uh, Barry Cogan, drunk in Ireland, film at 11, a.k.a. or also in the news, water is still wet. Yeah, Ezra Miller and Barry, I think different, different circumstances, but I wish them both the best. I like them both as performers. Our friend Reamer Bulldog. Sends in a tip and says, hey, John and Rob, well, hello. Man of Steel is fantastic. It has great emotion, great characters, incredible action. The Kansas battle was fantastic, and it has a great villain. You're right, John. It's the most underrated comic book movie of all time. Reamer Bulldog, I've always looked at Man of Steel. To me, I love it as a science fiction film, as a science fiction first contact story. You know, an alien has been sequestered here on Earth. It's been sent here, obviously, by his Father Jarrell and Laura and all that, but I mean, coming to grips with his own legacy and then being introduced to humanity, it's it's like his first day on the job. And I really appreciate like if Superman existed in our world and suddenly made an appearance today, what would that be like? And I think uh what it would be like is very similar to what we saw in Man of Steel. And you know, he's he's barely learned to fly when Zod and his army shows up. So I, you know, I've I understand that it's not the kind of the Dudley Do Right, oh shucks, Superman that everybody wanted to see, but I I do feel that the version that Henry Cavill gave us in Man of Steel was a great version of Man of Steel, and I thought he really embodied the character well. And all of this stuff, I've never I don't understand the criticism. The Kryptonians have launched an extinction level event against the world, and. Superman is not Superman. That's why the movie's not called Superman. It's called Man of Steel. He has yet to become Superman. And I think by the end of the film, he is Superman. But uh, you can't expect a, a guy that has just learned about his destiny to be the great hero we want, want him to be. You just can't. And I think they did a really good job uh, of doing that. So you and I definitely park our shuttle crafts in the same shuttle bay. Agreed. Tom G sends in a tip and says, guys, guys, the unbearable weight of massive talent is the best movie to me of 2022 so far. Are you planning on seeing it? Please take my word for it. I effing loved it. Well, Tom, 
I am a big Nicolas Cage fan. I can't wait to to see the film, to be honest. And uh, I haven't even seen everything everywhere all at once. I, I really want to go see that. I want to go see The Northman. And I might go for a triple feature this weekend. I might do it. I might do it. But I really want to see the Nicolas Cage movie. Yes. Yes, I do. Indeed. Um, Bigger. Bigger sends in a tip and says, first time writer. I love your show, Movie Club. I have three requests for Movie Club. Club. One is Logan. Uh, the other two are Clint Eastwood's Best Westerns, Unforgiven, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Bigga, I would do all three of those. I know John would probably say yes to Unforgiven and Logan. Don't know if he would say Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, even though Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is one of my favorite movies of all time. But those are all three good suggestions. What we try and do with Movie Club is to pick the, the 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 most popular titles that our viewers would like to listen to us opine on and getting a little too far into the weeds not that these movies are in the weeds at all unforgiven is one of i think one of the great movies ever made not just great westerns i love unforgiven so much i love logan obviously one of the best comic book films ever made and a great portrayal of those characters and good the bad and the ugly to me is one of the greatest most mythic films of all time so you bigga have picked three of my favorites and any of any of them or all of them would make a great movie club. I just wonder how many people these days do kids still watch Sergio Leone westerns? I don't know uh, because I, look, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is one of my and and Once Upon a Time in the West also um, is is or part yeah Once Upon a Time in the West, both directed by Leone, both amazing movies. And um, I know you didn't bring that one up, but all three of the ones you suggested fantastic choices and i wouldn't be surprised if in fact we do see him on movie club i'm really excited to hear what ray aura thinks about the lord of the rings movies today actually we're only going to talk about fellowship but i'm excited nonetheless stub mcshave says i saw the northman on easter sunday what a day to see it it may hit other people differently but for me it's a top three movie of the decade trust me watch this movie in a theater I loved it since, as a Swede, I grew up with the old Viking sagas throughout my childhood. Well, Stubble, you know, we go way back. We have history. Uh, I trust your, I, be, I believe in your uh, taste in storytelling, so I'm very excited to see this. The movie looks like it delivers. I've, I've not heard anybody say anything other than raving about it, except the one guy John read about or something. Screw that guy. But I can't wait to see this movie. It looks, I mean, it just looks awesome. So we're definitely excited to see it here. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Devin Meenan says, hey, John or Rob, it's me or Rob. I've got a concern. While I'm not the biggest Thor fan out there, of the three Iron Man, Cap, and Thor, uh, I'm still wondering where that Thor trailer is because its expected release isn't far uh, at all now. My big question is, what point do you just delay? Thanks. Well, Devin, uh, clearly you wrote this in before yesterday, and I appreciate that. But look what we got. We got a great teaser that told you it gave us so Thor's looking for himself, trying to figure out who he is, which I think is a great way to, to go. And we'll find out, obviously, we've talked about on the show that there's no Gore the God Butcher yet. We don't see the villain, uh, which I think is a smart way to go. But now we know it's coming out. There's no delay. And I think the movie looks terrific. And I love seeing jacked Natalie Portman um, wielding Mjolnir. And I am excited. I hope you are too. But I can understand, you know, I, I think that I prefer Iron Man and Captain America as well. But I do love Thor. Um, and I, I've been loving, I, I love Ragnarok. And I actually like the Thor movies, all of them, even Dark World. So now that we've got it, are you excited? That's the real question. Are you? Are you excited? Jerome, are you a Prince fan? Jesse, no, no, Jerome. Yes, that's a little purple rain for you. I know people are going to wait. What, Rob? What? I never meant to cause you any sorrow. Jerome says, I think that some movies and TV shows have ceased to exist because many are not on streaming and can only be bought on DVD or Blu-ray or 4K, and some are not even available to buy at all, and there are many people who forgot or don't even know they existed. Thoughts, Jerome? You've touched on a subject that is near and dear to my heart. You know, we've lost more than half of the silent movies that existed 
in the silent movie era, like even more than that. And the thing is, there's a lot of movies that, like you just said, that get forgotten. And because they're not A-list films, a lot of them are cult titles or underground titles. There's no reason people, why preserve them? I don't feel that way, but I don't want to see part of the reason that I love physical media so much is, look, I like a lot of exploitation films. I like a lot of foreign movies. I like gore films, crazy, weird, out there movies. And I buy a lot of that stuff because I feel that if I don't, who will? I must preserve. It's up to me, Jerome, to preserve the cinematic legacy so I can watch anything I want, the movies, and show them to people that haven't seen them yet. But I think you're right. I mean, we need to vigorously protect our cinematic legacy. And, and, and you know, even when, when they're available on streaming, who's going to watch them? You know, um, and that's a big that's a big question. And as you know, I say on my own YouTube show that I believe that pop culture has a half-life like every 20 years a lot of our pop culture sort of fades away 40 years it fades away even more and as time goes by pop culture and movies while there's a long legacy of, of films when was the last time not not a criticism of you just a question most people are they stay abreast of the pop culture of today so when was the last time you watched like a movie from the 50s even i we don't do that a lot there's so much to watch now we don't go back into history and and watch movies from the past and i think that's just a function of what's going on and pop the problem with that is if people aren't watching these things where's the where's the impetus to want to preserve them you know it costs money to remaster movies but i agree with you i don't want to lose any movie and i don't want to lose our rich cinematic legacy i very much appreciate your question and um and letting me ruminate. But this this is really the crux of why I love physical media because I buy a lot. You know, I have a lot of movies that are out of print. I mean, some things like The Hitcher, for instance, with Rutger Hauer. I've got a German media book of that. Very hard to find. Um, I don't believe it was ever released on Blu-ray, and now it's being remastered by Second Sight. They do such a good job. First day purchase for me. So a great, because who doesn't want The Hitcher? Guys, we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile, you know the one with the delightful ads with good Canadian kid Ryan Reynolds? So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, that's no joke because for years I've been using one of the major providers and it was fine. But I switched over to Mint Mobile a little while ago. The service has been fantastic. And the big difference is I'm now paying about one third of what I was paying before. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. A Dave XP sends in a $10 tip and says... Show name idea, the butter delivering device. Well, as John once pointed out, we want to eventually maybe sell this channel. I don't know if the butter delivering device would be the right way to go, especially if you're a fan of Bernardo Bertolucci's movie, The Last Tango in Paris, starring Mar Marlon Brando. I don't know. Is that a bad joke I just made? Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. But anyway, um, that's not a, it's a funny title. Bigger comes back and says, on one of your recent shows, you were doing the possibility of who could show up in Doctor Strange 2. To my knowledge, nobody brought up Thanos. Could we get a Hulk versus Thanos rematch? Ooh, bigga. People have said that Thanos is going to show up. I definitely think he's probably going to show up uh, in, in a future MCU movie, at least in flashback in some way, shape, or form. Maybe in Quantum Mania, but maybe... It would not surprise me if Thanos or uh, some iteration of Thanos shows up in this movie. It wouldn't surprise me 
one bit. Jerome comes back and says, I'm actually surprised that nobody on the Campia crew has heard of the backlash towards the 100 because it was the same as the last Jedi Game of Thrones backlashes, including demand for retcons and death threats from fans. You all should read about it one day. You know, I, I've never actually watched the 100. The only thing I really know about it, people like the show. I've heard they like the show. And William Shatner opined on it at one point. And you know me, I love my William Shatner. So I don't, I mean, I know what the premise of the show is, but I'm not I'm not sure about the backlash. I, I vaguely remember reading about they killed a character and they thought it was a trope. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's an LGBTQ character. I'm, I, 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 again, I don't, I don't know because I haven't seen the show. It hasn't registered with me, but that's the only thing I know. I don't know if that's the backlash you're talking about, but I've heard the show is good, and it's one of those things that I, I definitely would want to catch up on. I must, I must read about it, I suppose. Mischievous Gremlin, one of two sends in a tip. It says, hey, John and crew, earlier a few weeks ago, you said you were confident that they will be showing three screenings at CinemaCon, being Top Gun, but you said you might not know what the others are. Well, I just found out on Tuesday night, Universal and Blumhouse will be inviting people to see the Black Phone on Tuesday night. Yes. So it looks like there's the second screening confirmed. Don't know what the third is, but it will probably be, it'll probably be that Ray is right and it'll be WB's Super Pets Laugh out loud. They did do Clifford after all last year. Yeah, um, Mischievous Gremlin, that's what we're thinking. I Look, I can't wait to see Top Gun. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, the Black Phone. And I've heard Black Phone's good. It got some great reviews. It's really supposed to be scary, which, you know, I love my horror. And I, I would imagine Super Pets because they want to show a family movie. That makes sense. And uh, we will know. We will be at CinemaCon next week reporting all the goings on it's going to be exciting and uh, we will keep you abreast of what we see how we feel about it and uh so look for that on a daily basis looking forward to that uzi khan sends in a very generous tip 49.98 thank you so much for supporting the channel in that way uzi khan what a cool name um hey john and company i just saw aquaman again this made me realize studios need to re-release these types of visually exhilarating movies into theaters. The inclusion of modern pop music that James Wan implemented enhanced the movie experience. Agree or not? Well, first of all, Uzi, you know, they used to do that, especially Disney. Every couple of years in the pre-home video era, you couldn't see a lot of movies uh, unless they got re-released to theaters. So there were films, big films, like Gone with the Wind was something that got re-released throughout history. Disney would re-release their animated classics every couple of years. Um, you know, I think the the general rule of thumb, the, the thought is now that they don't have to do that because of streaming and home video. But if a movie's older, like if Aquaman hadn't been seen on the screen in 20 years, I would say that could very well be. Because it is. I loved Aquaman. I thought it was a visual spectacle. You know, I mean, come on, armored seahorses fighting dudes on armored sharks. Come on, who doesn't love that? But it is a visual feast. And I did think using um, modern music always, especially if it's a movie that's contemporary and they do a good job, they get the right piece of music. Like I still love Karen O's vocals over Trent Reznor covering Zeppelin's immigrant song that opens up Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. I love that. So good. Oh, the end of the ice and snow. Whatever, it's so good. I, I and, and you know, even like Ragnarok, great use of song as well. So yes, when when a when a when a movie makes good use of popular music, I I do love that, and it's definitely an art form as well. Definitely an art form, picking the best music, having a good supervisor, a music supervisor matters. Jerome comes back again and says, "Question about Book of Boba Fett." Have you guys considered that the reason Boba never uses his ship, especially in the final battle, is because it's having problems because of all the damage it took in the pit and the events of Mando Season 2? Well, that's a good question, but they did show it wreck and shop earlier in the season. So if, if that were the case, I think they need to explain that because as a viewer, if they had a thing saying, ah, that it's, it's no longer airworthy and it needs repairs, done. But when you have the ship and you've seen it attack from the air or, or go after the Sarlacc pit, um, 
you need to explain it. I a line of dialogue or somebody's got to say something. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I'm like, why didn't they use a slave one? And I think a lot of viewers are asking themselves. But I do think that your your explanation is a fine explanation. I would buy it, but I think they're obligated to sort of, you know, they've kind of got to tell us. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Otherwise, we we ask. Devin Meaden sends in another tip. Hey, John and or Rob, it's me. The Thor 4 trailer looks great. A little bummed they didn't tease Gore, but I trust he'll have a powerful entrance. Can't wait to see Thor, Star-Lord, and more kick-ass once again on the big screen July 8th. By the way, the score fit perfectly. Loved hearing Guns N' Roses. You know, I'm a, I am moved to L.A. when Guns N' Roses was still playing on Sunset Boulevard. So, yeah, it was awesome. I agree. I thought it looked great. And I love the idea that it really conveyed the fact that Thor, he's looking for himself. He's on a voyage of self-discovery. And that's what we need. That's what we need from our Thunder God. We need them to go on a voyage of self-discovery to find out who they really are. I like that. I've always been, you know, I've always been a sucker for stories where characters are trying to figure out, well, what is their place in the world? Who are they? What do they want? Where are they? Where are they going? And I love that. And I think that Thor is ripe. In addition, we're going to get a kick-ass fantasy action epic, and I can't wait. So I'm down just like you. I saw that trailer. Or teaser, let's call it a teaser. And how many times did I watch it? Not enough. I'd watch it again. Corey sends in a tip and says, Hey crew, question on comic book movies. When a new run of a comic is out, fans take it at face value and just look for it to keep the core of the character. Why can so many not do that with movies? It's just a new run. Guys, Corey, good question. I I feel the same way. And I go back to Man of Steel. I go back to our man, Henry Cavill. As somebody who's been reading comics for the majority of my life, and my life is, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting older, but I have read so many different iterations. When I go into a comic book movie, I, I just like you pointed out, I see it. Oh, it's a new run. It's a new, it's a new team. It's a new creative team. It's not like necessarily just an artist or writer. In the case of a movie, it's directors and actors and producers and writers and all that and all the people that work on these films. But I agree with you. You know, that's why when you go into Man of Steel, I don't. Like, I, I loved Man of Steel because, to me, as I said, it's a big science fiction epic, first contact story, and a superhero story, and I really enjoyed it. But other people want it to be something else. Here's the thing. Man of Steel isn't bad. You might disagree with some of the choices, but I thought, for the most part, it's a pretty solid movie, really interesting, well done. Zack Snyder did a hell of a job directing it. Now, to me, if you object to the fact that Superman has to kill Zod at the end of the movie. Uh, spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Um, you have to ask yourself, does that, forget what you know of Superman, does that decision work in the context of the movie that they're showing you in this new run? And I think it does. Superman is not given a choice. So what has to happen? Where's he going to do? Put him in jail? What jail is going to hold him? So, but I agree with you. Why can't so many not do that with the movies? They should. I do that. You'll probably live longer if you do. I just can't do that with Star Trek. <laughs> Fellow filmmaker sends in a tip and says, Hi, John and crew. I've been following you for a year now. Was wondering if you saw the number two global box office movie of last weekend was an Indian movie, KGF Chapter 2, and it's so good. Being an Indian, it really fascinates me. What about you? Bring on the filthy. Listen, uh, fellow filmmaker, I'd say my biggest weakness in my movie knowledge is Bollywood cinema, indie, Indian cinema, RRR, er, 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 just opened. I don't know what what you'd call that. It's just, it looks bonkers. Everyone's seeing it here. I can't wait to see it. I don't think we have KGF Chapter 2 playing here, but it. I would love to go see it. I'm a huge fan. Whenever I watch a Bollywood movie, I I love it. But I've I've read about KGF Chapter 2. I don't really know what it's about. But I definitely would want to see something like that. I, I really need to see er, 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 R, R, R. I don't know. Er. But um, yeah, I need more. I need more Bollywood cinema, cinema in my life. If only to have more Indian girls in my life. Because the people, the men and the women that populate Bollywood movies are beautiful. My God, you come from a beautiful place with beautiful people that make beautiful movies. Even though they're long and full of music. But I love them. 
The Halo Brony says, Today I learned that Kalel is Hebrew and means the voice of God. I fell to the floor when I saw this. Yes, I've heard this. Um, no, it makes sense. You know, it was Jewish immigrants, the Siegel and Schuster. Makes sense to me. Obviously, that's why they did it. And I'm all for it. And uh, Kalel, it's good. It's good. So Jerry Siegel and Joe, Joe Schuster, you know what you were doing. But yeah, it's cool. And doesn't that give you kind of a warm feeling in your heart that it means the voice of God? Love it. Dave XP says, not only on HBO Max, but I was happy to see today the Batman appear on Google Play here in Costa Rica. Definitely going to watch it tonight. Well, that's cool. David, did you not see it yet? Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Just make sure when you watch it, turn it up really loud. Just crank that sucker. Crank the volume. I don't care if someone comes in and goes, turn that down. Don't. Watch it. Hopefully you have a home theater system, maybe a sound bar or something. Just crank it. Trust trust, trust your Uncle Bob here when I tell you. Play it loud. And uh, right back. Tell us what you thought. The Meerkat sends in a tip and says, For my birthday, I've been saving to rent a theater at AMC to watch Doctor Strange 2 after watching the trailer for Thor 4. Looks like I'll be saving for that too. Well, the Meerkat, I'll tell you, uh, as you know, on the John Campy show, we've had two different events. One for the Batman one for Spider-Man No Way Home, and John rented out a uh, theater, and we had fans come. So much fun. I love meeting you guys, and it's there. I, I'll tell you, there's something pretty cool when you stroll into a theater that you've rented. You're like, this is my domain. I own this theater at least for the next two hours. There's something very cool about that. So I, I totally agree with you. I think that's exactly what you should do for your birthday, and it's probably going to rock. Uh, Devin says, hey, John and Rob. Well, it's me. Love and thunder. I love the comedic interaction between Star-Lord and Thor towards the end, let alone guns and roses. I bet Gore's official first entrance is going to be powerful and intense. Yeah, we all love the trailer here at the old John Campia show. I, I mean, I thought they did a, a fantastic job with it. And hearing, hearing a sweet child of mine, what's not to love? And I think it's going to be funny as heck. And I'm really looking forward to the workout montage because I think it's got to be both Star-Lord and Thor. Although, as John pointed out, he's probably going to be working out across the galaxy. I'd love that. A lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Plus, they can show us planets we haven't seen in the MCU yet, just giving us glimpses where Thor's, like, working out. Be great. Pepperjack Cheese says, Disney will be bought and sold off in pieces under Chapek. This iconic company of 100 years will fall under his mismanagement, sadly. Well, Pepperjack... It'll never be sold off. Don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, I don't know what he'll if he'll bring back the management style of Bob Iger, but we got to give him time. But it's never. Don't worry. Disney is not going to be sold off. Never, 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 never. So don't worry about that. No matter how bad Chapex regime gets. Caleb Kaiser says, hey, hey, guys, have either of you seen the movie Miracle? It's my favorite sports movie. It's so good. It's a dramatized story of the 1980 U.S. men's Olympic hockey team starring Kurt Russell. They also hired real college hockey players and taught them to act. Miracle's great. Uh, like I've told people a lot on the show, I'm not a big sports guy. But, but now, hey, now knowing that Macklemore and Marshawn Lynch um, bought the, Rap or the Raptors, the Kraken, the Seattle Kraken, maybe I'm going to watch more of hockey. But, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I love Miracle. I, I, love, I love sports movies, and that is a great sports movie. Armando says, I don't care. He killed my mom. At that moment, I completely felt Iron Man's pain. What did you What did you feel at that exact moment? Again, you know, when you think about a movie like Civil War, um, you're constantly asking yourself, whose side are you on? And at that moment, yeah, man, I, I'm, I, felt, I felt I was right there with Tony Stark. Right there with Tony Stark. And I would have felt exactly the same way he did. I would unapologetically... I'd want blood, blood for blood, man. Uh, blood for blood. Even though, as Roger Moore tells Melina Havelock in Free Your Eyes Only, before seeking revenge, you must first dig two graves. That's what the Greeks said. Uh, Max sends in a tip and says, why are people calling Valkyrie king of Asgard? Wouldn't she be the queen? Well, Max, I think we're going to find out why in the movie. Uh, you know, I... We all have, uh, there's, the world today is full of fluid gender roles. Why can't Valkyrie be King Valkyrie? Why not? 
I, I have no problem with that. If Valkyrie wants to be the king, she can be my king any day. Max goes on to say, when do you think we'll know if Spider-Man stays in the MCU or not? If Sony and Marvel extend their deal, do you think the Morbius post credit scenes indicate that they are not signing a new deal and Spider-Man is no longer in the MCU? Max, Spider-Man's never leaving the MCU. They're never going to allow that to happen. It's too beneficial for both sides. So I wouldn't worry about it. I think that they're going to stay in the MCU for a long time to come. At least that's would be that would be my guess. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. Because you know what? Spider-Man No Way Home, look at how much money it made and having the MCU's influence and, and Kevin Feige help them achieve really something amazing. So I wouldn't worry about it. I think it's going to be okay. I think we're going to get it. Jessica Quintel says, hey, guys, love your show. Well, thank you, Jessica. I watched April 18th show, and my favorite sports movie is Kevin Costner's 2014 movie, Draft Day. I don't like football, but I like this story. Have you seen it? I have, and I, like you, I don't know much about the NFL draft. I've never paid much attention to it, but I have to say I uh, really found it fascinating. I mean, I, I'm a huge Seahawks fan. I like football a lot, I, but I just don't know a lot about it. I know how the game is played. I don't know a lot about stats or history, but I thought Draft Day, look, is it is it a great movie? I wouldn't call it great, but it was a really good movie. I found it really entertaining, and I learned something from it, which I didn't know before, which is a little bit more insight into how the draft works. So like you, I'd be like, yo, man, definitely a worthwhile film. Liked it. Now you make me want to watch it again. Lone Star sends in a tip and says, hey, John, I have a suggestion for a name for your show. How about Bring on the Filthy? It's been your saying for a while, and it's something that people know is affiliated with you without it being just your name. Well, you know what? I think if people tuned into our show that had never seen it before and tuned into, ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tune in to Bring on the Filthy. And we ended up, you know, pontificating about Deadpool or whether mutants are in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Eh, people might be a little disappointed. Hell, if I tuned into a show that said, bring on the filthy. Let me tell you, I would like to see that filthy brought on. But, I mean, obviously, it is John's catchphrase. I just don't think it would necessarily work for this show, for the John Campy show. I think we should actually do a show called Bring on the Filthy, though. A another show where we examine, you know, sex and cinema and go back and talk about erotic thrillers like Fatal Attraction or Basic Instinct or Body Heat and go back and examine the filthy as it is portrayed in movies. I think that would actually be pretty cool, to be honest. Anonymous sends in a tip and says, I am hungry for another Star Wars feature film. I understand it's possible that Lucasfilm is in disarray, but I hope their vision becomes more focused soon. My preference would be to watch a movie with lightsabers and a heavy focus on The Force Anonymous. I'm with you too. I'd love to see another Star Wars movie. I hope it's better than this. You know, people are like, Rob, why are you wearing a Rise of Skywalker shirt? Well, I got this when I went and saw the first show at the Chinese theater in IMAX and they gave it away. And being that I'm in the process of moving and we don't have a washing machine, we have a dryer. But uh, we don't have a washing machine. We have to go buy one, which we haven't done yet. I found the shirt, and I'm like, oh, it's clean. It's clean because I've never, ever worn it. So here we are. But I would love to see a new Star Wars movie. Who doesn't want to get a new Star Wars movie? I want to see Jedis and lightsabers and all kinds of ships. But I want new ships. Like in The Force Awakens, we just saw old X-Wings and TIE Fighters that were painted differently. I want new ships. One of the great things about watching Star Wars Empire and Jedi as I was growing up, I mean, Look what Empire gave you in the first 30 minutes. You got Imperial walkers, scout walkers, and all-terrain armored transports. You got speeders. You got probe droids. You got Darth Vader's Star Destroyer. I mean, I want to see new stuff. Give me new things. Give me new Star Wars stuff. That's what I want. But hopefully, we will get one soon. Anonymous says, going to the theater, especially for a premiere, is one of my favorite activities. Mine, too. Some people may not like waiting, but for me, part of the fun is waiting in line and or in my seat for the movie to begin. It's almost like waiting, waiting to ride a roller coaster. Anonymous, I totally agree with that. I love the anticipation. You know, and plus when you're out, out in line, like especially outside where the public is there, and you end up meeting people that are like-minded. I've made so many friends with people uh, waiting in line for something we all want to see. It's fun. It's fun. I, I enjoy it. So I agree with you. I'm I like waiting in line for the theater. I don't ever want to miss that. And and 
like you said, um, anticipating the movie before you see it's great too. Sharpay's fabulous brother sends in a tip. It says, music is such an integral part of many films. It often functions as an expression of characters' emotions meant to elicit similar reactions from the audience. I think many of the most profound scenes in movies are nonverbal with only music. Sharpay, I agree with you 100%. You know, since we are just talking Star Wars, when, when Luke Skywalker steps out and he sees the twin setting suns of Tatooine going down, all you hear is that great John Williams score. <laughs> That's a terrible version of that. I don't even know what, what was I doing. No, 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 what, whatever. You know what I mean, though. The French horn, the John Williams music, and you know why? Because all of us understand. All of us have been Luke at that moment. You know, looking off into the horizon, wondering, "Man, do I even have a future? What's up with me?" And great, I totally agree with you. Music is. That's why music in films is so important, and film scores are important. Extent Crab sends in a tip and said, could Doctor Strange be in trouble for looking through the 14 million timelines in Infinity War ra rather than the spell in No Way Home? Also, show name suggestion, In Frame. In Frame's kind of interesting. I don't mind that. Uh, I don't know if Doctor Strange is in trouble. I think he might do something at the beginning of the movie that makes him in trouble and that he has a litany of things he's done wrong, whether it's Dormammu, whether it's what happened in No Way Home or whatever he's been doing or looking into the the different outcomes in Infinity War. I mean, I think that um, probably all those things, but I would like to, I, I think there's going to be something else we haven't heard yet that is part of that. Boris, one of too many, sends in a tip and says, hey, John and or Rob, it's been a minute since I've written in, so it's time to spill about all the experiences from the last few months. I freaking loved Batman. Was interested only because of how much everyone was hating on Pattinson. And, uh, Boris 1 and uh, Boris 2 and excitement for it. I'm not a fan of Batman. I know it pisses all my friends off too, but this movie was incredible. I actually liked Uncharted and I love the games. Me too. Wahlberg didn't work. Tom Holland was charming and suits a young Nathan. Morbius was just shit for me. My nephew enjoyed it at first, but when I told him what happened, as he asked me questions, he was also like, why would they do that? That's so stupid. If an 11-year-old sees the flaws, it's saying something, haha. -ha. Shame, because I was hyped about it. Sonic 2 was magnificent. I was worried it would be a one-hit wonder, but its success had made me so happy. I can't wait for a sequel. My nephew was smiling the entire time. It was great. Also random, but I found the sister-in-law quite funny. She was quite funny. Quite funny throughout. Despite its surrounding story, it didn't matter too much. Fantastic Beasts was so good. I liked the previous one too. I'm a massive Potterhead and felt the charm with this one, but time, uh, but time for the finale to this long, but time for the finale for this long ass release. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That movie is a fucking masterpiece. I've not felt so many emotions watching a movie. Michelle Yeoh is just amazing in this. Her daughter's struggle was so well acted. The husband was such a sweetheart. You mean short round from Temple of Doom? And John removed this part of the message for spoilers. It broke my heart to see. But Michelle Yeoh just proves that with age, she just gets even better and more beautiful. Remember, she was a Bond girl. She played Wai Lin in the um, Pierce Brosnan Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, that was his second outing as Bond. She just gets even better and more beautiful. It's actually ridiculous. This is my movie of the year so far. Uh, watching the Northman Friday. Have a good rest of the week, guys. Never mind. I've got some characters left. Ha ha. Halo Episode 4 was awesome. The exposition dump was needed, and the character development was great. Thanks for all the entertainment you bring. Well, Boris, first of all, thank you, sir, for generously supporting the channel in that way. That's very nice of you. Now, I, you know, I could opine on everything you've said here. First of all, I think I think everything you've mentioned, whether it's Harry Potter, whether it's the Northman that you haven't seen yet, whether it's everything everywhere all at once, whether it's all these films, even Morbius, which might have been a shit show. Um, what's great is we're getting so many interesting movies. 
And, you know, different talk about diversity. And I don't mean in some social justice warrior way. I'm talking diversity in terms of stories and the kinds of movies we're getting. I mean, think about it. Everything, everywhere, all at once. A Harry Potter movie. The Northman. I mean, the new Nicolas Cage film. We're getting a lot of really diverse, different kinds of movies. And they're providing that kind of experience for you. So everyone's getting certainly their money's worth. Everyone's excited about movies now. And how cool is that? We can go to the theater and we're seeing some exciting stuff. And, um, it, you know, you sound just as excited as we are. I mean, I think one of the great things about doing the John Campion show is when we talk about these movies that we're excited about, we're genuinely excited. We, we are not a bunch of people that are like, oh, it's, you know, movies, man, they suck these days because, you know, they're not as good as they were 25 years ago when I was a kid. We don't feel that way. We're still as excited for movies now as we were back then. And I, I love that. And, and you seem to be just like we are. You're getting excited. Even when a movie's not so good, like Morbius, I mean, I learn from it. I enjoy watching a movie in a theater, munching on popcorn, having my Diet Coke or, or my peanut M&Ms or whatever it is I'm having. I think just the act of watching a movie, it just turns me on. So I'm glad you uh, are having a great time and thank you for supporting the channel in that way. I can't wait. Uh, write back and tell me what you think of the Northman because, man, I want to see some brutal, cold violence and some fearsome revenge, like total wrath of God revenge. I can't wait. Tim Tracy says, hello. So what do you think the possibility is that Lo Thor Love and Thunder will either A, retire Chris Hemsworth Thor, or B, possibly kill the character to pass on the torch, so to speak? Love to hear your thoughts. Cheers. Well, Tim... There's no way that Hemsworth is going to die, and there's no way that he's going to hang it up. I think it's just another part of the rich tapestry that is the MCU. I think I think Hemsworth, especially because of Taika Waititi's, we've talked about this on the show, that the humor and and really gave him uh, a, an outlet and 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 allowed him to to shine as the comedic uh, deft comedic performer that he is, and um, I think it's great. And I don't think he's going to go any, anywhere anytime soon. I really don't. Uh, bless me. I'm sorry. I, I, allergies out there. Uh, pollen. I, a couple times a year I, uh, when the spring is here and uh, there's all kinds of pollen in the air, I get a little, uh, a, a little sneezy. Gray Shot sends in a tip and says, I saw everything everywhere all at once with my girlfriend and we both loved it, although she kept repeating, what? From the insanity. With the movie making more this weekend than last, and with strong word of mouth, do you think it can do well at the box office? Well, great shot. First of all, I'm glad you like the film. I and look, I think people, for the most part, I've heard almost unanimous praise for the movie from anybody who's seen it, and I think it deserves to get everything that it's getting. It deserves those accolades because the film, um, you know, it's doing well. It's given something. It's given moviegoers something new, and the fact that your girlfriend and you had a fun experience there. Um, I think word of mouth is going to, it's an indie movie. It doesn't have the marketing budget behind it that say an MCU movie does, but, uh, the fact that word of mouth, that's like the best publicity ever. And we'll see it has a potential to go up even more this coming weekend. And I would be so there for it. I'd love to see that happen. Say hi to your girlfriend for me. I don't know her, but just say hello. And it's great that you guys go see the movies together. I think that's fantastic. And you have good taste in movies. Julio Vasquez says, I just saw the Batman on HBO Max. And when I saw the Batmobile on screen and heard the jet engine starting, my only thought was how great it must have sounded in the movie theater with the sound systems. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Julio. When the Batmobile uh, turned on in the movie, dude, I mean, you feel it. Your, your molars rattle, your rib cage vibrates. I mean, it was incredible. I, I, the only word I can describe it as being is ferocious. I've said it before, ferocious. The Batmobile is ferocious, dude, ferocious. So really, really good stuff. Um, yeah, I, it, it bums me out if people are watching it on TV and not in the theater, because in the theater, what an experience it was. What an experience. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But yeah, it's. I, I really enjoyed the movie. I can't wait to watch it again. But yeah, that Batmobile, dude. Woo. Johnny Vu sends in a tip and says, Network Pisces. Is that Network Pisces? 
Pisces Studio, Galactica Network, Studio Highlander 2, Kiss Kiss, Gang Bang Network, Discussion HQ, In the Frame, Subjective Frames, A New Hope Entertainment, The Hammer HQ, and Days of Future Entertainment Show will be here regardless. Well, first of all, Johnny, uh, thanks for supporting the channel, and I'm glad you'll be here regardless. Those are all really interesting names. I, you know, I think one of the things I worry about with a name is I want people to hear a name, and then when they tune in, they get what the name implies. And some of your things do. Um, that's what I would like. So people, when they, they might not have seen us, they're like, oh, what's that? When they stop in, they feel that they did get their money's worth and that the show title told them what it was. And when they clicked on it, they liked it. Jesse Shook. Jesse Shook sends in a tip and says, when did you guys get a new Leon? I missed the previous Leon you were talking about last week. The only Leon I know is the Natalie Portman movie, a.k.a. The Professional. The version of Leon is much longer, and it's got a little bit more, uh, a lot of that. There was a lot of uncomfortable stuff between uh, Natalie Portman and, and Leon, Matilda and Leon. So they, they, you know, they didn't, they cut some of it out when it came to America, but I prefer the Leon cut. Um, I think that's the Leon you're talking about. I, I don't remember, but man, do I love that movie. Love it, love it, love it. I, I don't want a new Leon. I want the old Leon. Uh, Annie Gamer Reviews sends in a tip and says, here's a fun fact. In the PlayStation 2, PSP, and Wii adaptation of Spider-Man 3, you actually encounter Morbius, who has been turned by Shriek. In this version, they are married, and Shriek gained her powers due to the symbiote. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> I'd love to see more of that. That's really interesting. That would have been more fun than what we saw in the movie, I think which was disappointing. Uh, Reagan Crisp, one of two. Hi, John Campion and crew. You talked the other day about what was your first cinema experience with a partner, and it made me think back. My first time going to the cinema was with my girlfriend and Thor 3 before we met, and after seeing my excitement for Infinity War, she went back and watched Every MCU film up to that point, 18 movies in just five days, just to see Infinity War with me. Now she's a massive fan of the MCU with me. She is a keeper. Well, Reagan Crisp, don't F it up. She sounds like the perfect girl for you. And uh, that's great. That's great. I, um, You and your girlfriend, good couple. I will wholeheartedly support whatever future you crazy kids have. Mad Villainy sends in a tip and says, John and Rob had quite a spirited discussion. If anyone could be the manager organizer of DC films going forward, I don't know if it was mentioned, but Bruce Tim could do it. I know animation is different from live action, but why not? Well, the thing is, it, it requires more than just knowing your story. You also have to be a good manager. You have to understand you, you're going to have to run uh, productions of movies that might cost $200 million, and you have to know how to get along with talent. It's a big job. It's not just overseeing the DC universe. It is a big, big job. But, you know, could Bruce Tim do it? Maybe. But he's more of a creative. I don't think he's an administrator or, or doesn't really want to be. Snidely Whiplash <laughs> sends in a tip and says, The first decision Marvel needs to make is whether Wanda is Magneto's daughter in the MCU. If she is, then a reverse no more mutants will have had massive consequences. I agree. They've got it. Look, they haven't defined mutants at all yet. And I think that they absolutely need to. And I'm there for it, man. I, you know, I love the mutants. So I'm, I'm there for it. Mark Nedow sends in a tip and says, Hey guys, I was wondering if you know what Iron Man villain who had saw blades as armor and weapons. I remember one comic showing him cutting bits out of Tony it was a freak show as a kid reading that issue. Any ideas? Have my tickets for Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness on the 5th. Well, congratulations there. I mean, I, I don't, it doesn't, saw blades as armor and weapons. That doesn't ring a bell quite, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know who that is. I'd have to look it up. I could find it, but I'd have to look it up. Uh, Mark P says, hi, John, you are negative on physical media. Yeah, I know. Damn it. Why is he, why is he negative on physical? I mean, I, I offer it. I'm like, dude, 
you have a PlayStation 5 with a disc player inside it. Allow me to give you a disc with special features to watch. You won't do it. You won't do it. I don't know why. You should. Hi, John. You were negative on physical media. When VHS went to DVD, there were tons of rare and lost movies that never made its way to DVD or streaming. A movie buff would appreciate and support physical media. You are wrong and Rob is right. Far be it for me to argue with you, Matt P. You and I, we park our shuttlecrafts in the same shuttle bay. Uh, and I'm right. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, Garden Variety Vagabond says, hey, John and or Rob. Well, hello. If you haven't seen the Disney released Moon Knight interviews with Oscar Isaac, Ethan Hawke, and May Calumway and director Mohamed Diab, do it today. Great insights on how they were able to have input as well as the overall process. I have not watched it, but you think I'm not going to? I'm waiting until the show to be over so I can sort of do a post-mortem and come up with, well, what do I think about the show? But I'll totally watch it. I didn't know that was available, so I would absolutely watch it. I bet it is fascinating. Reagan, uh, Reagan Crisp, one of two. Theory, Thor 4 will open with gore on his home planet. Thanos arrives to kill the 50%, the old way before the stones. Gore will lose his entire family and becomes vengeful toward the gods for not being there to protect them and prevent the slaughter. Reagan Crisp, I like where your head's at. That sounds, I like that theory. We'll see where it goes, but I, I do like that. Not a bad theory. It's, it's a pretty good idea. And it makes sense to me. Reagan Crisp. Oh, it's one of two. I should have known that. So Gore will lose his entire family and becomes a vengeful and becomes vengeful for the gods for not being there to protect them and prevent their slaughter. So he sets out to kill those who failed him. It would necessarily have to be Gore's family, killed before the infinity wars snap, so then their deaths are not undone in Endgame. I haven't read too many comics, so I may be way off. Could be. Uh, I like it. I think it's a really pretty good idea. I do. I think it's pretty good. Uh, Roderick Kingsley says, Hi, John and crew. Any chance you guys will talk about Bram Stoker's Dracula and Movie Club? I love this movie with its atmospheric setting and stellar cast. Gary Oldman, Anthony Hopkins, Keanu Reeves, and Winona Ryder, and directed by Coppola. I'm right there with you. Um, I saw that movie opening night in Westwood on a Friday night, and I was, to be honest, a little disappointed in it, but it's grown on me over the years. I mean, come on, how can you not like it? But, um, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm, and the, the, the score, Wojciech Keeler's score is so good. The love theme, the vampire theme, oh, it's great. Really, really, really great. So, yeah, it's great that, uh, it's great that you love the movie. Matt McClure says, Theory, Gore's people were killed off in an Odin crusade. Gore's scars are from his village and people being slaughtered and burned down. And he was left for dead in the rubble. Ever since then, Gore has vowed revenge on all the guards, gods. I think that's pretty good, Matt. I'll buy that. I could see that happening. Absolutely. Mm, not bad. Not bad. Just your average Jose. <laughs> Network name idea. You always say that as long as the story is about a good movie or TV show will be good. So how about a good story network? Plus, your story of success is also a good story. That, that's a really interesting idea. I've talked talk to John about that. I will run that up the flagpole. Very interesting. Hmm. Just your average Jose. Uh, oh, I guess that's it. Good story network. I mean, it's, I like that. Um, War Doctor 10 says, hi, John and crew. Over or under 30%. The we see the evil evil incarnation of Cap Will was it will we see? Will we see the evil incarnation of Captain America in the multiverse of madness? Thanks and bring on the filthy. I don't think so, but you never know. Why not? I mean, I think anything is possible with the cameos they've got set up and what they're doing with this movie. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I could see something along those lines uh for sure absolutely happening like heck why not that will do it for this episode of mailbag for april 19th 2022 my name is robert meyer burnett you can find me on instagram at rm burnett find me on twitter at burnett rm 
or find me on my own YouTube channel, The Post Geek Singularity, or go to our website, postgeeksingularity.com. There's always something new there every day. And if not, find me right here on the John Campia channel. For everyone here at the John Campia show, I want to say thank you for generously supporting this channel via super chats and tips and for giving us compelling stuff. Well, letters I want to read, things I want to opine on. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this new issue of Mailbag. I certainly enjoyed doing it. And after that, I would say, remember, every person you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. And with that, I would say to all of you, have a better day.